Okay, so today I'm doing my, my cam time, time and chain for the 2.0 FSI motor. So what I already got taken apart is the battery is all out. I disconnect um the coolant line coming into the radiator right here. And I kind of disconnected the um the N205 valves, the VVT valves. I kind of um removed it so I could get the coolant line over it. So I had space to remove the bolts. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove the valve cover gasket and then the high pressure fuel pump. Everything's already disconnected over here. I just gotta move them off the, the valve cover gasket, the line. I just gotta get those off. So when you guys are doing this, make sure you take your time because this is not really, it's not easy at all. Make sure you just take your time and just go with the flow. And I have all my tools right here that I need. And I, I ordered the entire kit from FCP Euro. They're really good with the kits that, that they have on the website. So I'm going to guide you guys through. So I'm going to just kind of just remove everything right now. And then while I'm doing the chain and stuff, I'm going to show you guys in progress i just got back i had to run to the store to get some tools i removed the pcv system because i have a catch can so i removed it and what you want to do since you're going to work with a lot of bolts you want to just put it in a bag and label it it's ideal to just do that it's easier so you don't have to put bolts in the wrong place so i removed the pcv i removed the hoses from the back coming to the the valve cover gasket those are all removed i removed the spark the not the spark plug the corp the cord the cord plugs are also removed as you can see, the, the harness is all the way back here. I removed those. So my next step is just to get the valve cover off and then I'm gonna get the VVT cover off. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna update you guys again. Still going, I had to run and grab some tools. So right now I'm working on a high pressure fuel pump. So right now you can already see that the high pressure fuel pump already got the bolts out and I kinda, I kind of told you guys I disconnected the cooling lines already. I disconnected one of the high pressure fuel pump lines. Um, and that's the line coming out the high pressure fuel pump. Um, so that one is disconnected. So the one coming in, that's the one I have to um, disconnect. And what I'm, what I'm using to disconnect that right now is really hard to get to. I kind of removed this valve that was right here in the high pressure fuel pump. I removed one of them, the outer one on the outside. So what am I using to get that? I'm using the M. The spline socket it's a small one and i'm using a 13 millimeter open end wrench and i'm kind of just using it and just working it off that's what i'm doing right now i don't have nobody to record so it's really hard and i'm kind of struggling right now and it's kind of getting dark. okay guys so we made process progress progress um the high pressure fuel pump is currently off the car the cam follower is out right now everything is sitting right there um what else I gotta do? So the next step is to, um, I might have to take this wheel off to set the, the motor at top dead center. So I might have to remove a spark plug to set it at top dead center. Cause what you wanna do, why you wanna set it to top dead center is cause you want the cam to actually line up. You want it to line up. So you gotta set the car at TDC, top dead center. So the cams, cause you have to use a cam locking tool. It's inside right now at the moment. So you wanna put a top dead center. So these lines gonna line up perfectly when the engine is at top dead center, both of these lines are gonna line up perfect. You just put the cam tool and install it, and that should that should do it pretty much. So yeah, I'm gonna do that in a few. So I'm trying to get this cover off right here. Last night I stopped because it got real dark and I couldn't see anything where I was working, so I kind of just packed everything up. But this morning I'm gonna continue because it's light out. It's kind of raining, but I got a tent over the car, so um. I'm going to disconnect um, this cover right here. I just have one more bolt underneath the bottom right there, like underneath there. Um, in the video, I'm going to show you guys where is all the bolts. I'm going to put like a, a screenshot of where all the bolts are so it's easier so you guys don't have to search for it. You just look at the picture and just find the bolts. So I'm going to just continue right now. All right, okay, guys. As you guys can see, I kind of used the vice group right here. I don't know if it's going to fuck it up or not. Probably not, but that's just the cam. Because the previous video, I seen a guy use um a fucking vice grip to progress right now. So everything is off. I got the cam locking tool inside. What I did, I took this wheel off. And I kind of tried to get the car to set at TDC, top bed center. And I used the socket to guide me. So what I'm about to do is put the spark plug back in. So nothing, nothing really drop down the spark plug hole and then i'm gonna lock the cam screw these down then we're gonna take off 
we're gonna take off this little um chain right here the tensioner and that should do it guys so let's let's go so what you got to do to get the cam locking tool in what i did i just placed it on top try to get one of the, the notches on the bottom to line up then i rotated the engine and then it just dropped right in the in the the little notches right here because when you set the car tdc top that center everything should should line up everything should line up when the car is set at tdc so that's what i just did not too long ago set the car at tdc the cam tool locked in as you can see everything is lining up right here so that's good so we're just gonna loosen the bolt on the side right here lock this in place and we sh that should do it quick update i got the bolt out already just now i just took it out and you see looks like somebody already did this job a long time ago because as you can see the cams kind of lined back up in the correct spot so that's that's really good um so the bolt is right here and the tools you need to do it, the number is right on top, right there. That's the tool you need. It's the original tool from Volkswagen. I ordered it from eBay. And we got new bolts for it as, as well. It's right there. That's the one that just came out. And we got new gasket. I got to clean that up with a razor blade a little bit. I don't know if they reused like the old gasket or they didn't get a new one. But it's a fucking mess. quick update the bolts are loose already so i'm taking them out i'm gonna use my magnetic screwdriver so i don't drop anything so it's really important as you already see everything is lined up already right there and this cam should also have a notch on there right there where you should put the the link so what am i gonna do i'm probably gonna go online and double check just to make sure everything that i'm doing is correct and inspect because like Doing this is at your own risk, to be honest. I'm just doing it so I can learn more, like, because I don't like paying shops to do stuff. I like to know that it's done really, really good, so I'm doing it myself. So that's why I have all the tools that I ordered. And if you're going to do this tool, you really need the cam locking tool. This is extremely important if you're doing the cam chain timing. Make sure you get all the necessary tools you need and do it at your own risk. I'm not responsible for any damage that happened when you guys do this to your engine or whatever you guys do it's not i'm not responsible for it so it's at your own risk okay as you guys can see i took off the tensioner it's leaking a lot of oil i'm gonna have to clean it up after so as you can see the tensioner is out right now everything is out the cams are locked perfectly because they already have the mark so they line up so what I'm going to do is put the new tensioner back on. You also want to put something down to catch the oil that's dripping from the motor. Because there's going to be a lot of oil from all the oil galleys next to the intake chain cam side. There's going to be a lot of oil galleys on that side. So make sure you guys just put something down to catch it. As you can see, it's kind of like running down. But I'll clean that up after though. I'm not really worried about it. I'll make sure you know, the environment is safe and all that. So... Next is to um, just check if you got anything left over. You might want to clean this up a little bit if you guys don't mind. So it's still very good when it go back on. If you guys want to clean it, that's fine. It's all up to you at this point. Just put the tensioner back on for the cam chain. And you want to torque those to seven, seven Newton meters. Could also do the check if the, train, the chain has stretched like a lot of you just hold them up and you just you can see if the chain stretched or not they're about the same size so that's not bad so i already got the tensioner the tension on for the, the cam chain and you want to torque to torque those to seven foot pounds that's not a lot that's probably something you could get with your hands it's really not a lot seven foot pounds is just it's just like one really big turn and just just give it just give it to it seven foot pounds that's not a lot you probably could get that with your hands you don't have to use a torque wrench if you don't have to but you should use one though but you don't have to as you're looking right now as you can see on the new chain there is a timing mark on the camera adjuster. you want to um line up the 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 bronze um link to just that um that that timing mark right there so you just line them up and then what you want to do is just like pick this up you bring it over to the car 
and you also want to put it on this chain and then you have to as you can see i have a a, a vice grip because i don't have the tool you put in here to move the the cam forward to get the adjuster to lock in so what you have to do is put this over this this the intake cam the chain over the intake cam and you got to hold the cam on the cam adjuster you got to hold it over the exhaust cam and then you have to try to get it to lock if it doesn't lock you take it off and redo it again until you get it right yeah i just got mine back on so that's good all you have to do is just hold the exhaust cam adjuster over the, the notch and then you got to put it on this chain then you got to try to lock it so that's all you have to do just try to lock it if it does not lock you got to take it off and do it again and make sure like when the first time i lock it the remember this little colored link i was talking about it moved from the notch so i kind of took the exhaust adjuster back off and i lined it up again and i put it back on if it moved just try to get it to line back up and put it right back on and you know the cam adjuster is in line because look at the hole right there you see everything lines up so that's a good sign everything is good so just do everything in reverse order put the bolts back in i have new bolts because these are only one time use so get new bolts put them in and you should be good back on this bolt is torqued all the way down already so all we need to do is just put the covers back on and put everything back together as it was when you took it off and this bolt this bolt is torqued to 18 foot pounds so make sure you get that right. I want you to go pick up a torque wrench. So I made sure it's really, really accurate. I picked up a torque wrench. This snap on one, this one didn't have like seven foot pounds. So I went to AutoZone and I picked up a smaller version for the one that I have right now. So this did the job. Um, The next thing is just to put everything back together and we are all set and the job is pretty much done. But right here, I want to clean this up a little bit because you see all this like, I don't know, gasket maker on there or some kind of shit. I don't know, but I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit and I'm going to put the cover back on. Some kind of like adhesive like gasket sealer to hold the valve cover um, back on. You don't have to do that. I don't know why I used it, but it was all in the, the galleys and stuff on the VBT chain and the tensioner. A lot of the adhesive from the, the gasket maker was inside the engine. So please be careful when you guys use that. All you have to do is just order a new gasket and just put it on. It's really easy. It lines up and it only go on one way. You cannot mess this up. Else you're gonna be leaking oil from the VVT chain. Be careful when you guys are doing this. okay quick update the high pressure fuel pump is back on i put this cover back on as well the vvt solenoid is in all the bolts are tight and ready to go so the next thing is just to put the valve co cover back on and the spark not the spark not the spark plug the core pack and I'm all done for the day. And I might be able to start it up. If not, we'll see what happens. So, yeah. So, everything is back together. The car is running healthier, as you guys can see. Before, I guess the timer, timer was off a little bit. But now it sounds really, really good. Um, but only thing wrong, like, as from before, the car, like, before, the car was giving me a lot of power at low end. Now it's like it take a while to give me all the power. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know if because I adjust the timing back properly. That's why it's doing that. But I'm gonna take it on the highway and see. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe. I got you out with more content.